I used to be a language teacher and a part of my training was when we get students, especially the lower level students who don't speak much English, uh, perhaps we would have a lesson based on a specific topic. So for that le lesson, they had specific learning objectives. Let's just use the example to be able to say sentences in the, the present simple tense or something like this, right? We would focus in on those objectives and not to let the other mistakes that are made get in the way of that. So what I mean is if we are focusing on the present simple, the only thing that we would correct is anything in and around that grammar. Uh, we wouldn't focus on the spelling, let's say. Let's say it was a writing task. The reason why we wouldn't correct everything is because if we have a goal and objective that we're trying to achieve, then bringing attention to the other things that they're getting wrong might confuse them, overwhelm them, uh, overwhelm them, sorry, uh, and throw them off what it is they're trying to gain. And I was thinking about this in terms of reverts. At the beginning of my journey as a revert, I had a lot of, you can't do this, you can't do that, you need to do this, you need to do that, you, you must do this, you must do that. Obviously, there's good intentions behind that advice, so I'm not criticizing the people. But what I've noticed from teachers I've had later is that they were very wise in how they taught reverts if the revert was trying to learn Sava. They would keep that as the focus. They wouldn't focus too much on um, other things that they were struggling with because the objective of what they were doing with them was teaching them prayer. And then that leads on to something else. Like they guide reverts one step at a time and i really appreciate that that doesn't mean that we don't uh, give nasiha when it's necessary obviously if people are doing things that take them outside the fold of islam then that's it's that's different but every everything has to be done with wisdom you can't just revert and then become perfect it's just not possible and it's not because of the lack of commitment from that person is just the lack of know-how. Not that Islam is a culture, but it is um, a lifestyle and lifestyles take time to get into and for it to be perfected in a sense. While saying that, I did watch a really beautiful video from a sister that I've noticed her knowledge is, is very evident. I, I won't, I won't uh, give her too many compliments because I'm sure she wouldn't like that, but mashallah, tabarakallah, her knowledge is very evident. She made a good point of saying that we as the learners have to push ourselves because we can always give ourselves excuses to procrastinate, always give ourselves excuses not to, you know, get stuck into learning. And I say this from experience, it will always come with regret, trust me. Because life can be challenging, it can be time consuming. There's so many th different things that we could do, but it's about prioritization. It doesn't matter how busy you are, if, if learning Islam, there's always time that can be found. SubhanAllah. I was speaking to my husband about this the other day. We were talking about the scholars of the past and people who have pretty much preserved and carried Islam through to today. We were talking about, like, some people would travel hours, days, to ask a scholar one question, you know, or to get a really small amount of time where they're able to seek and gain knowledge. And we are so fortunate today to have access to it at our fingertips. Not even just within our homes, it's not isolated to our homes anymore. Like we can literally, we have access to it in our hands, our phones. You know, subhanAllah, like this is a, a, a new day. You know, it's amazing. It, it comes with great responsibility as well. We are going to be asked what we did with our time. 
and if we have access to knowledge at our fingertips then what excuses do we have SubhanAllah Alhamdulillah yeah, so what to take for the video is that we prioritise our own learning and gain knowledge first because knowledge is key to a successful life with knowledge inshallah will come wisdom and will come a better practice inshallah but also how we teach the people who we are responsible for whether that be our kids whether that be um, any new muslim that we are mentoring whether that be our friends who um, are returning to their faith we have patience we have a logical approach to teaching them a realistic approach we're facilitating learning you know we are creating a space we're creating relationships goals that we're trying to achieve and within a time some structure to it is what i'm saying <laughs> Gosh, I can't talk this morning. May Allah guide us. May Allah increase us in knowledge. I mean.